million dollars. Start your new life. You're going to go to the World Cup. I cannot wait to see the pictures. You're going to be so excited. Especially for those of you who are going into healthcare, but even, even if you're not, just for your friends, just for your family, just for the people that you love, it's important that you know what your choices are. It's important that you know that excuses are really just excuses, that um, those sacrifices that you have to make are important because you want to live longer. Anybody here already have kids or no? You do. How old is your kid? Almost seven. Almost seven. How old do you, how old do you want your kid to be when you die? Yeah, that's a real question, right? That's not possible. Right, right? You want your kid to be 70, 80 when you die? Yes. Exactly, right? <clears throat> Those of you who are going to go on to have children and have families, this is a real question. How old do you want your kid to be when their entire life is destroyed? Because when you die, your kid is going to suffer like shit. No matter how old they are, because they're your kid, and they love you. But I'm so, yeah, it's sad to think about, right? I have to have this conversation with myself. How old do I want to be? How old do I want my kids to be? How old do I want my parents to be? My siblings to be? My friends to be? How old? When is the right day to ruin somebody's life with the news that you're dead? What's the right day to ruin your kid's life? Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday's a great day, right? But that's a real question because it all seems so far away. It all seems like it's never going to catch up to you. It all seems like you're going to be 20-something forever. It all seems like you're never going to be 40. Look at me, I'm 40 years old, my kid is 21. You're 40? I am 40 years old. <laughs> yeah, you see? Cooler bags. <laughs> 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 That's what this looks like. That's what 40 looks like. When you take care of yourself. Huh? I want to take you Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I'm not. 40 years old, I got a kid who could be a student here. Because I eat well, because I rest eight to ten hours a day, because I don't stress. I don't have fuck boys in my life. I keep them away from me. I'm very, very concerned about my health and well-being because I asked myself the question about five years ago, how old do I want my kid to be when I am? And I thought, we need my kid are like 20 years apart, so I was like, I think he should be like 80. I think he should be 80 when I die so that I can be 100, because that way I think he's going to be able to take it better. Like, boom, my mom died, it's cool. I'm 80, she's 100, it's about time. <laughs> right? Because at a certain age, it doesn't bother you as much. At a certain age, if you're, if you're, if and when your grandmother lives to be 103, you don't feel like it was wasted, like it was a wasted life. You feel like, you know what, Granny, you did your thing. You're 103, like, all your friends are dead, it's time to go. Right? Rest well, I'll see you soon. Like, not that soon, but like, soon enough. <laughs> but when someone, gets sick early, dies early, when someone has to have their leg amputated for diabetes, when somebody has to undergo and take medication and all this stuff, all because they didn't eat well. It's such a wasted life. And it starts so young. Because these are the, these are the days you form your habits. Let me give you an example. Uh, what's one plus one? <laughs> Where did you learn that? How old were you? Huh? First grade? No, you learned that shit before then. You had to have, right? Well, that's five. Somebody said, what, what age? Three. Three? All right. So let's say between three and five, you learned that one plus one equals two. You still remember that shit, right? You never forgot it. You know what a square looks like? You know the color red, the color blue, the color purple, you know everything? Not the movie, but the actual color? Okay, cool. When did you learn that shit? Preschool. Preschool, kindergarten. Those are your most formative years. The things that we learn on those formative years, we never forget. Can you remember what you did yesterday sometimes? No. You're like, what did I even do? Did I even go to school? I have no idea. I woke up for my nap this afternoon, I woke up like, oh, I forgot to do my webinar. Oh, I did my webinar. I totally forgot. And that was just this morning, because that's the way my brain is, right? We're adults, we have other things going on. But the things that you learn in your most formative years, think about it. The things that you learned when you were two and three, and four, and five. You know those things to this day. Yet, today, you're only retaining 10% of what you're learning, right? Those are your most formative years. You picked up other habits too. Relationship habits, eating habits. A lot of our habits are familial. We eat what our parents eat. We eat what our parents gave us. We continue to eat these things. I was born and grew up on an island, St. Thomas, in the Virgin Islands. 
So we ate fresh. We had fruit trees in the back, and we fished for our food, and we, we grabbed crab fresh out of the ocean. So I grew up eating fresh food, right? So when, <coughs> as I grew up, I, I did, you know, once I moved to the United States, I was like, oh my God, what is Taco Bell? This is amazing. And I did that for like a number of years, and I realized, I realized the changes in my body. When my face was breaking out, when my hair started getting thinner, when my nails were brittle, when a friend of mine was a photographer with does all my photos, I said, hey, Jamal, I need you to shoot me uh, and my son or whatever for our family photo this year. And he said, no, I'm not going to shoot you like this because your skin looks terrible. <coughs> my skin looked terrible because I was eating Taco Bell every night, 2 o'clock in the morning, I get up, run down to 24 hour Taco Bell, eat so much food, and then fall asleep. <coughs> Bottle of wine, some shit, like ruining my life. But I was in my 20s. I realized then that I had to go back to what I learned as a kid. But I also realized that most people don't learn healthy eating as children, and these are things we have to learn as we get older. So I went back to my indigenous ways of eating, started eating my island diet, lots of fresh fish and fresh food, whatever, and fresh herbs. I didn't use dried herbs or anything. Everything is fresh. If I want some basil, it's fresh. If I want some thyme, it's fresh. If I want some whatever it is, it's fresh. I have basil trees. I have many plants. I have all. I, I do it all. Because I understand now how important it is, because I saw how my body changed when I stopped thinking it was important. And I didn't like the changes that I saw, and the people who loved me didn't like the changes that they saw either. Imagine how much better you can look if you drank more water. Your skin, your hair, your teeth, your eyes. Girls, especially sometimes, boys don't care. Sometimes you guys walk around looking like, whatever. <laughs> it's cool. We like you anyway. <laughs> We're going to change you soon. Get you. You're like, here, put this mask on, baby. <laughs> put this mud mask on, baby. Your skin's messed up. But girls, this is part of our identity a lot of times is how we look. And not just because of the social ramifications of that, but because it does feel better to look better. We know how we are at our best. We know how it feels when our hair is freshly washed and trimmed and like this is like a whole new person. You know what it's like when you take your face mask off and your face looks completely different than it did 15 minutes before? You're like, whoa, I'm pretty. Like, we really care about the way we look. Sometimes more than guys. Some guys also care about the way they look. You guys do your hair. It's when you guys tweeze your eyebrows because you have that unibrow thing and nobody likes that. And then like, sometimes you guys have the backs waxed or whatever. It's not just us. We all care about how we look as well. We should because it helps us feel better. Guys, when you guys get a haircut, guys do too. You guys get a haircut, you're the man. You walk taller, you start talking to girls you never talked to before. <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys get a fresh lineup, all of this is clean. Especially you guys, especially you guys where your, your, your neck hair meets your back hair. But then you get that shaved off, you know. You know, you guys, your neck hair meets your back hair. You see it, but you get that nice and clean, you feel better about yourself. <laughs> Imagine how much better you're going to feel when. The quality of how you look equates or uh, comes from the way you treat your body from the inside. That's a whole different kind of good looks. That's looking like this at 40. That's looking like a student when you're in your 40s. That's getting older, but aging, aging very well. It's oxidizing slowly. Once you're able to grasp this concept of the cooler bag and not eating out as much, preparing your food, fresh and spending less money, $26 for four days is our example right now, to look and feel better. You're going to do that shit all the time. And then it's going to become part of your system. I believe in creating systems and certain ways that we do things. I get up in the morning, I do a certain thing. I make a shake every single morning. It's almond milk, it's maca root, it's cacao, it's uh, collagen peptides, it's uh, super green powder, and some raw honey. Uh, I do this every single morning as part of my routine. Why do I do this? Let me explain. Uh, almond milk because almond and coconut mix. Almond milk because cow's milk is bad for you. Who here drinks cow's milk in their cereal or whatever? Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> cow's milk is killing you. Did you know that? Nobody ever really tells you that, huh? Because when you're growing up, when you're growing up, you're like, vitamin D, get your cow's milk. You know, got milk. All these things you saw growing up, nobody ever told you about the pus that's in your milk. Nobody explains to you 
that human beings are the only mammals on earth that drink any kind of milk past infancy. Why do we do that? Nobody else does that. And then we're the only mammal that drinks other mammals' milk, not just for survival, but just because. Because we want cereal. Right? Every other mammal, think about it. Once a mammal is weaned, once they start eating solid foods, they no longer go back to milk. In their natural habitat, they never go back to milk. Is everybody thinking about that? Okay. And when they do go back to milk, unless it's a dire situation and it's a baby that's lost in the woods and starving to death, they don't drink another mammal's milk. They only drink milk from their mom or from a surrogate mom. Why are we the only mammals that drink another mammal's milk and drink that way past infancy? There are documentaries you guys should watch. Go on to, when you guys go on Netflix, what do you watch? Crazy Anatomy. <laughs> what? Crazy Anatomy. Crazy Anatomy. What else? What else do you guys watch? What are you guys binge watching right now? Ozarks. Oh, no, that's good. Ozarks is really nice. That's a good show, right? Super good. Anybody watching documentaries on food? Oh, wow. Dr. Sebi's is on Netflix. Huh? It's not on Netflix. It's the 70s documentary? Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi's? It's not on Netflix. But you, but you watched it? I haven't seen that one. There are documentaries on food all over Netflix. Why are you guys not watching them? Super Size Me. Huh? Super Size Me. Super Size Me is one, and that was what, over 10 years ago? Yeah. There's lots more. There's. Oh. Um, I had a think of a teacher who made us watch Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. Oh, yeah, that was the follow up to Super Size Me, wasn't it? No, it's no. The, the juicing one. Oh, what did you think about that? It was good. What did you learn? A lot. A lot. I mean, yeah. Imagine if you guys watched more food documentaries. There's one about milk, and it's just called milk. And explains to you all the horrific ways <laughs> and reasons why we should not be drinking cow's milk. So in my shake in the morning, I have a almond coconut blend, and then I do maca root. Anybody know what maca root is? Here's something, sidebar. Uh, friggin' tab, space, indent, capital. Your doctor is never going to explain to you what these things are. And the doctor, my doctor, told me why he's never told me certain things that I've been learning on my own and through my own studies. He says, because I never learned that in medical school. Remember, your doctors only learn what they learn, just like you're only learning what you're learning. Just like you only know that milk is what you drink, because anybody told you to drink milk as a kid, you've been drinking it your whole life, you have no idea how bad it is for you. Do you know that those of you who drink milk are more susceptible to cold and flu? Do you know that milk creates mucus in your body? That mucus creates a nice, soft, wet place for sicknesses to breed. So you'll find yourself getting sick more often. You'll find yourself in cold and flu season. You don't need a cold, you don't need a flu shot. You need to stop drinking fucking milk. <laughs> Period. I haven't been sick since 2007. Why? Because I got uh, bronchitis. Chronic bronchitis lasted four months. I kept going in and out of the emergency room. I almost died. My doctor said to me, I think on the third trip, he goes, You have to stop drinking milk. I said, Doctor, why are you telling me this now that I'm sick and dying and I can't breathe and I have some inflammation in my lungs that I'm on this breathing machine? Now you tell me to stop drinking milk? Why did you tell me this? Why did anybody tell me this when I was a kid? So I stopped drinking milk because I had the chronic bronchitis that eventually went away and never touched it again. I have not been sick since. That was 2007. It's 2019. I hadn't had so much as golf. The maca root, back to that. So maca root is a root that looks a lot like ginger. It is a, it comes in powder form, gelatinized and not gelatinized. Gelatinized has nothing to do with gelatin, it just makes it easier on the stomach, it's a different kind of processing, still organic, still natural, and it's great for stamina, sexual stamina, for those of you who are not virgins. It is great for working out stamina, for workouts, giving lots and lots of energy. Uh, for women, it is called our fertility super root. Even if you're not trying to have kids, that's not the purpose of your fertility. You want to keep your fertility intact because it's going to keep your periods regular. Those of you who have irregular, those of you who have uh, really bad cramps, those of you who have uh, PMS and you're trying to raging bitches during this time, it's going to make all of that go away. Here's something else that's really interesting about maca root is that for women of color especially, we are more susceptible to fibroids. 
five words are tumors that grow inside the uterus and can be as big as a watermelon. A lot of women need surgery for their five words. If they get too big, uh, you may have to have your uterus removed and or have it taken out and your uterus is never the same, prohibiting you from having children. Maca root naturally shrinks fibroids. It also helps you with your thyroid. It basically balances out everything in your body. And your doctor isn't going to tell you, like, I don't call this woman to tell me this one. He said, hey, you have three fibroids. We have to do surgery. Mm, how about I get back to you in like six to eight weeks? I'm going to go home and do a little freaking research. Because you're not cutting me open for shits and giggles because you can't figure out what else to do. This was over 10 years ago, so I went home. I got on my nifty computer. What do you guys need your computers for? Schoolwork, of course. Right? And what else? Right. So I go on my computer. <laughs> Life and to make money, okay? So I go on my computer, I'm kind of like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to have surgery. I don't. Some scary shit. I don't you to cut me open. Whatever you're about to do, I start yanking things out. This is insane. Boom, boom, boom. I find Maka Root. I start taking it immediately. I go back to my doctor. Eight weeks later, the five boys are gone. My doctor says to me, what the shit? What, what happened? He's dumbfounded. I said, Doc, I've been taking Maka Root every day, twice a day. For the last eight weeks. You know, my doctor said, my, my, my degree doctor said, what the fuck is the matter? <laughs> <laughs> right? And him and I have been going to him for over 20 something years. I love him, and, and, and he, knows, he knows my body inside and out, and I've been teaching my doctor some things. That's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to be able to teach your doctors some things. I want you to be able to teach your patients some things. I want you to be able to teach your family some things. Your moms, your grandmas. I went to go visit my dad in Scottsdale over the weekend. He's 66 years old and his pantry, mind you, I got a 10 year old brother at home, but still. My dad comes in, he picks me up um, from wherever he, you know, I drove in, I met him somewhere, whatever, so I get in his car, and okay, we go to the house, my dad unloads the trunk of the car, he walks into the house with a box of Oreos from Costco. You know how many Oreos come in a Costco box? All awesome. the Oreos, right? My dad walks into the house with all the Oreos, 66 years old, he's trying to get a stomach for the first time, I've never seen this man with a stomach, I'm like, what the shit, dad? Oh no, these aren't for me, this is for your brother. Yeah, because my brother's 10. He needs 100 Oreos. Sounds great, Dad. I open up the pantry to put the big-ass box of Oreos in, and there is like, you know Saturday morning cartoons, you were a little kid, they showed all the fun stuff, like all the fun cereals and all the fun snacks. Saturday morning, it was all in the pantry. It was everything you're not supposed to eat. Dad, what are you doing? Oh, that's not for me, that's for your brother. First time I was there, I sat down with my dad. We were watching something on TV, catching up on reruns and talking. My dad is like, do you want some chocolate milk? <laughs> oh, oh no, dad. Said, do you have cacao powder? He's like, never heard of it. Okay. Uh, do you have almond milk? He's like, nope. I got some cow's milk and some Hershey's syrup. Nah, dad, I'm going to pass on that. My dad is out here and a big ass thing of chocolate milk with some Hershey's syrup and some cow's milk. And then he had about six of them for you. Cool, Dad. Have fun with that. The next morning, my dad comes out. Oh, my stomach. Really, Dad? What happened? What happened last night? Did you do something different? Do something weird? I don't know. I think it, uh, it must have been. It must have been the he blamed it on something else. No, Dad. It's your Oreos and your chocolate. Let's go back. I forgot what I was telling you that story. But say that. I'll get back to that in a second. Let's go back to my boring shit. So we've got our almond milk, we've got our maca root, and then cacao powder, which is my Hershey syrup. 100% natural cacao. What is cacao? It's, yeah, it's the pod, it's the bean, where chocolate comes from. By the time they process chocolate for you, it's no longer chocolate. It's just freaking sugar, right? You know what's so amazing about cacao powder? And you can get this from Trader Joe's for like $3. It's even than fake chocolate. It's rich, it's dark, it's delicious. 